Good afternoon, everyone. I can say that because it's noon. Uh, I'd like to introduce Reese, who's currently tying up his shoe. Everyone look awkwardly over at Reese. Uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, serving up vector tiles directly from PostGIS. Um, Thank you. Uh, please clap to welcome Reese. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you all hear me clearly? All right. Ooh. Um, hello again. Um, <clears throat> I'm Reese, as was previously announced. Um, I'll be talking about Martin, which is a vector tile server written in Rust. Uh, I have no association whatsoever with the Martin team. I just happened to be browsing around, and I found Martin on GitHub in December. I had a project working on in January, and it was very handy. Um, that's me. That's me on GitHub and Twitter. And that's the company I work for, or with, or own. Kind of, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> Martin. It's very, very simple. It fits my style of development. I like to do everything in the database. I like, lots of, like writing lots of PLP GSQL. This is fine for me. I just drop a Martin executable. I spin it up. If you run Martin with uh, the help command, this is what you'll get. And it is very simple to use, simple to configure, and very, very fast. Uh, on the screen here, you can see the other options you have. You can directly call the PostgreSQL server, or type in the PostgreSQL server URL, and it will connect to the instance, and it will look for uh, tables with a spatial column, or a geometry column, with some populated SRID. If your SRID is zero, it will just not use it at all. Um, also, you can use environmental variables to configure Martin. Um, a couple of things to note. Uh, the database pool size is the number of open connections that keeps to the database at, you know, at any given time. Um, there is also another alternative to configuring it using a YAML file, which looks like this. And again, all you're really doing is configuring pool sizes, connection strings, and <clears throat> worker processes. One thing to note is if it is your production uh, site, it's best to use the YAML file. Um, the YAML file can specify directly each table you want to publish. If you just did it either with the environmental variables or through the command line, every table that is found will be published. So the YAML file is useful to effectively lock down which tables the public can see. <clears throat> and once you are up and running, uh, this is the API you'd use. Uh, you can see each URL and what it does. So two things to note. There are table sources and function sources. Table sources are what you think they are. They're just a table. So if, for example, you have a table of Countries, <clears throat> you point your, your front-end uh, web mapping library at that, at that place, and it will give you all the data back for the table. You can't, filter, you can't filter by attributes with a table source. To filter with attributes, you'd use a function source, which we'll get to shortly. Okay, so this was a product I was working on. It was pretty simple. As I alluded to earlier, the countries are just one, one table. The thing to note is that because you're actually pulling just from the table directly and there's nothing being done, uh, in this case, the number of vertices for the countries were many. And using a table at this level would be, a bit, would, would be slow because you're pulling back literally every vertex of every uh, geometry. So ideally, you'd want to use a function source to limit what you can bring back. 
which I'll show you shortly. All right, so I mentioned filtering by attributes. So this was, or this is rather, a little list of attributes you can filter on. Filtering by attributes is done using a function source. And a function source is any PLP GSQL function that has the following signature. It must have a Z attribute, an X, X, uh, sorry, a Z parameter, X, Y, and a query parameter that is of type JSON. The first three are of type integer. So using this, you can now basically filter anything you can think of, anything you want, any kind of data. You drop your uh, query parameters into the JSON, and you can go to town with filtering. So I'm going to walk through this example here. Um, this was a project to display crime data across the contiguous US. And as you can imagine, well, you can't imagine, let me tell you, we had about 300 million data points over a three-year period. Uh, so we had a partition table on the back end. I was partitioned by month, and it had a crime type ID and a date and timestamp. So go back to one page. So here you can see we're trying to filter either by different types of crimes, and you can potentially also specify a start date and an end date. How many people are comfortable looking at SQL? How many people like looking at SQL? <laughs> okay. Um, for those of you who don't, my apologies. Um, all right, so as I said, you have four, uh, you have four attributes here. Z, X, and Y are what gets passed in <coughs> by, by your like leaflet or Mapbox GL. And then the query, query, the query parameters are also passed in as JSON. The first thing we'll be doing is trying to figure out where in the world we are. So I'll highlight right here. We need a bones uh, attribute. And that will basically take the tile or tiles that you're sending back and convert it to a local uh, bounding box to do the first spatial filtering on your data. Um, this was actually the very first thing I did, and I wasn't sure if you could, uh, I wasn't sure at the time if you could have an empty JSON object. So this is just some, um, right here is just some code that I was trying to like figure out some stuff. Okay, so, oh, I can't scroll that way. All right, so the first thing I'm checking on is, do I have a start date and end date? Do I also have uh, different types of crimes or crime parameters in the JSON box, in the JSON uh, query params uh, variable? And then from there, it's effectively just checking the Z level, because at some zoom levels, you clearly can't pull back the entire thing for a, a tile, a tile like a one or a two. That would be like a bag of data. Uh, so at high zoom levels, I am not returning much in terms of actual crime points. I think I'm still, well in this case, I'm actually doing a hex bin for each area. So it gets progressively deeper, where you have different Z levels. So the, for the first five, we do one thing. For some more, you do something else. And when you get down to a level where it would make sense to actually pull back or bring up uh, actual points, you did that here. So you see here, the flexibility is almost endless in terms of what you can do and how you can filter it. At the very, very end, <coughs> you're, you're pulling up this ST as MBT function call to actually generate the tiles in PostgreSQL directly. And you're shipping that off when the function is closed, back to Martin, and that forwards it back to your leaflet or open GL, Mapbox OpenGL front end uh, mapping library. Boom, boom. This is another similar example of uh, the function call. Um, 
There is one more thing I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah. So, Martin is very, very simple, as I said. Easy to, easy to install and configure, easy to set up, and the most difficult part would be doing your own function, your own function call, but if you're comfortable with uh, PLP GSQL, it should be very, very straightforward. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? When I saw this, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. Um, I'd looked at a couple, like very briefly, uh, other tile servers, but once I realized I could just actually install this executable and run it just like that with minimal configuration, I was sold. So yeah, that was really it. No, well, the, when I started it with that two, I think, or dot two, is that dot three now? Um, I did make one, uh, I filed one ticket thingy bug. Uh, um, <laughs> they haven't done anything about it. But um, I, I guess it's a very small team, so I, I'm waiting. Yeah. Well, with your skills, I'm sure you can contribute. I know zero rust, first of all. Um, I can contribute like with documentation maybe, but not coding in Rust. So. What are the other functions? Yeah, Hold on, let me confirm. I think the other functions in this actual query or in no, in general. What does ST as MVT provide? Or just in... Yeah, you can put... It's basically post-GIS, you know, on the back end. So any function that post this can... You can think of, you can shove okay, it in there. So, so Martin does, does the... Martin is, yeah, it's just simply just talking to the database and pulling it out, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is all actual PostgreSQL and post-GIS in the back end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I really love seeing these, uh, these presentations done by members of the user community. Making a presentation like this is a great way to support the project and the developers. Also, ending a little bit early allows everyone to flee this room and line up for lunch before the lineup gets too long. So get out of here. <laughs>